I want to thank my uh, uh, previous two speakers for just really educating me as a parent, just going through uh, just the academics of just really helping our teenagers. Uh, right now, I'm going to talk about just, the, um, just some of the things that they will go through as a teenager and how, as a parent, you can help them. Now, I'm a counsellor, and uh, let me tell you, in one week, I get to see three, three different groups of people. The first group, uh, I'll call them the con condemned uh, bunch because uh, I'll visit them in the prisons because I do uh, gang work. So I'll talk to those people who are ex-gangs. They do renunciation, they come from my program, and I'll get them to talk to their families. So I'll share a little bit about my gang work later on. What, what is it going to do with teenagers? Well, a little bit, okay, if you can understand. And uh, I get to, um, get to meet the happy bunch during the week and I go to schools and uh, talk to the kids, those are happy bunch. And then in the weekends, I get to talk to the worried bunch. And who are they? Look around you, all right? So we got three bunch of, uh, I, 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 I varied my work and I love doing it. And uh, right now I'm into um, doing gang work right now. I'm going to Changi prisons and just really talking to people who used to be in gangs and want to be out of gangs and, uh, and triads and all. And it's very interesting to know um, that parenting has got a lot to do in just helping them to come out of it, okay? Teens are very much misunderstood. Now, um, how many of you stay in Bishan area? Anyone? Oh, I see some. Okay, uh, what, what do you see? Now, if you go to Bishan in the afternoon at about 2 to 3 o'clock, uh, especially in Junction 8, you get to see a lot of teens. And I hate to go uh, during that time. You know why? Because they will be the, no the noisiest bunch of kids around. If you go to McDonald's and you want to have a good time with your spouse, better not choose McDonald's. Choose the next restaurant because they're going to be loud and they giggle and, uh, you know, they find all the reasons to laugh at, silly things. But when they are alone, they are the most quiet individual. Isn't that true? When you bring them out, they will be not talk, uh, talking to you. And when they're in a the group, they are so bold, they dare to try new things. And, you know, teenagers are like that. I speak to a lot of teenagers. I've spoken to a lot of them. Uh, I, I still like to talk to them because they are, they are very funny, they are very, um, they are very individual and they give you very crazy ideas. They make you laugh, they make you cry. Okay, I have two under, under the same roof, I tell you. Okay, um, every single time we just go through this, okay, over and over again, just talking about um, just this, what, what they go through in life. And uh, now you, if you have primary school kids right now, enjoy. Okay, enjoy because they're right now going to go with you wherever you want to go, uh, go to places you like. But when they are teenagers, they, 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 they try and ask them to go out for an afternoon. How many of you have tried? You still go out with your teenagers in the afternoon? Anyone? Okay. Uh, you try, you know, when they're secondary one and two, and if their friend call them, especially when they, they receive a call, a call from their friends, okay, uh, they, they, they know who to choose very easily. Let me ask you, what do you see here? This is not an IQ test, don't worry. How many of you see only one picture here? Raise up your hands. Only one? How many of you see two? Okay, very good. Those uh, that see one, don't worry, okay? It's a matter of perspective. Now, you can see Eskimo here going into a cave. Or you can see, you know what? It's an Indian's head, right? A red Indian, Sioux Indian's head, okay? So, you actually still see the picture. If I, is it wrong if I will tell you that I only see the Indian? And it's a picture of an Indian. Am I right or wrong? If I were to tell you that uh, I only see an Eskimo entering a cave, am I right or wrong? No, it's a matter of perspective. And sometimes, you know, uh, it's, it's challenging because um, parents fail to see the perspective of the, of the child. Okay, especially teenagers. They're trying to explain to you. They're trying to tell you their world. And, and, and as parents, it's easier for us to go down to their level um, to, to talk to them. Uh, I've conducted a lot of parenting talks in the weekends and all. I uh, remember particularly one, uh, one particular parenting talk. One parent came up to me very angry. And he was saying, Richard, why are you telling all the parents to change? Why don't you have a talk for the kids to change? Why don't you change them and tell them to be more respectful, tell them to really do this and that? Why the parents have to change? Then I, th th then I reasoned with this gentleman. I said, you know what? They have not gone through life like you. Do you have the experience if you've gone through teenage life? Probably we have forgotten how is it like, how difficult is it like being a teenager. How many of you have skipped that stage of being a teenager? Raise some of your hands. But when we talk to our teenagers, it's as if like we have skipped that stage. 
may have forgotten how difficult it was. And every single time we reason in such a way, you know, during my time, I was an easy kid. During my time when my mom said jump, I would say how high. Right now, if I ask, if I ask my kid to jump, they say, why? It's so different. No, it's not that different. We have our body changes. We have our own challenges. Maybe at that point of time, we don't have computers, but we do have our own vices, right? Some of you are smiling right now. And you know what? Um, they are very much misunderstood. If we, it's easier for us to go down to their level. I always believe that. It's very difficult for a teenager to come up to your level because they're not mature. I'll explain why later. What comes to your mind when you think of teenagers? Rebellious? Active? Curious? Defensive? Trendy? Nowadays, if you were to give them some, something else more than, you know, beside Nike or Adidas, they'll look at you one kind. Try buying, <laughs> buying something from them in the night market and say, you know what, $10, three t-shirts, and get, guess what? It's, uh, it's Hello Kitty t-shirt, and that's great. They'll look at you and they'll throw it on the floor and they say, yeah, this is your rack right now. And I, I don't think I right now choose clothes for my, for my teens. I actually give them a budget to buy their clothes because I don't want to fight with them. Okay, they have their own taste and that. All right, they get excited easily. They giggle. If you're on an MRT train, you want a, a quiet moment and you have teenagers around you, you can forget about it. All right, they're energetic, vanity pimples, deceitfulness. Right, very deceitful, right? They tell you they are studying, but did they really study? Maybe for a moment or two. Now, how many of you have a teenager like that? Raise up your hands. Or you have a kid like that, going to be like that. Now, turn around and tell one another, say, it's going to be okay. Tell one another right now. <laughs> it's going to be okay. You need that, okay? We need that assurance. And of course, hormonal changes. You know, parents, don't fight the type. It's going to come. You can stop anything but this. A lot of parents want to stop and I'll stop the hormonal, uh, hormonal changes. You can't. They're going to develop whether you like it or not. So get to understand the changes they're going through. Then when you understand the changes they're going through, it's better for you to really help them through. You know, I, I was very worried uh, this, uh, this weekend because um, it's my 20, 21st anniversary, so I decided to go to Taipei. And I don't know whether you read the news. Uh, there was a typhoon coming. And I tell you, I wasn't prepared for typhoon. I was prepared for shopping, shopping, shopping until I die. And then I, when, when typhoon comes, I can see the Taiwanese, they're so prepared. You know, they were all geared up. I look at them, why should you wear boots, you know, in summer? Right? Why should you wear boots? And boots were selling like crazy. You know, I was in my sneakers and my wife's in sleepers. Then I realized we really need boots. Because when typhoon comes, there was flooding and flooding and flooding. There was wind. And, I, you know, I, I wasn't very prepared. But the Taiwanese were very, very prepared because it's a norm. Parents, are you prepared for a teenager to grow up right now? Or are you going to say, you know what, they're going to be the same thing. I know my kid. I know, you know, I know. A lot of parents say, I know he's a good goody two-shoes. You know, very sadly, when I, when, when I um, uh, in the course of doing gang work, okay, uh, with those kids coming um, in and out of jail, I realized when I talked to the parents, then, uh, you know, in my gang work, it's, it's, it's a very special program where all those inmates, they come together and uh, they have to renounce that they're going to quit gangs and all. You're talking about 30 to 40 years old, okay? All tattooed, all big men. And uh, they talk about their childhood. It's very sad when you process their childhood. They process their teenage years. They process the parents' parenting. And the, the worst, you know, the, the most hard sea thing is to get the parents to come into prison, walk all the way into Changi Prison to Cluster A, sitting beside, you know, no longer there's wall, whatever, they tore down the wall and everything. They were in the same room with the loved ones, sat beside and looking at this adult and the parents looking at them and saying, you know what, I still love you. And, uh, and this gang, uh, this, this quote-unquote taiko, they will cry. And then they say, you know, I, I just need that love from you. I need the assurance from you. There was a particular guy, you know, he was all tattooed all the way from the neck onwards. And, uh, He's going to be in there for at least 10 years. He did something very, very bad. I remember the mom looked at him in the eye and said, you know what, I'm going to die, but you're still my son. Well, that moment, uh, as a counsellor, I, I, I have to hike, you know, and hike. you guys continue, I just go one side, I was crying. Because it, it's the power of parenting that changed a child. Okay, this, this man had never been connected with the parents since 
the day he, he, he get to know life. At the same time, during uh, teenage years, he was wayward, but the, but the mother never gave up on him. Okay? And it's really a great story. And parents, you can do so much. First of all, understand the teenage cycle. All right, try and understand. All right, the, your teenagers are going through that cycle. How many of you, um, you have heard about this university they taught you about parenting? You graduate with a degree in parenting. How many of you? How about a diploma? No? <laughs> welcome uh, to Singapore and welcome to the world. We, we, we learn as we go along. And I tell you one thing, okay, um, a lot of parents today, they are very fortunate to have a lot of um, uh, resources around that you can read about and, and you can talk about. My, my time, my parents, my mom only got one style parenting. It's called the cane parenting. How many strokes? <laughs> Even you say something positive, accidentally you get one stroke because you speak at the wrong time. <laughs> Isn't that true? Understand the teenage cycle, that will help a lot. Get a lot of resources from it, culture and language. A lot of, um, a lot of parents are very put off by the language of the children, okay, of the, of the teens. Yeah. And the way they talk, and they try and act cool, they talk and don't talk, you know, and then they have body language. And before you can even talk to them, you're reacting towards their body language. Isn't that true? Why are you talking to me like that? Can't you stand straight? Don't you have a spine? <laughs> Having the right mindset is very important. I think parents, you've got to have a right mindset that no matter what, you know, the, the, the child can change. I always tell parents this, you can always change school, change a nation, but one thing you'll never change is your relationship with your child. Okay, let me ask you, for the first time when you hold your child, how many of you fathers here, you were inside the labor ward? Raise up your hands. Yeah? Very good. All right, my two speakers down here. How many of you, uh, you get to hold your child? Immediately come out, you hold a child. Or some of you are clicking away. You're almost like doing a Discovery Channel kind of thing. Uh, clicking away. <laughs> okay, now, what do you say when you hold a child? The first, the first thing you look at a child, what comes to your mind? What do you say? How many of you count the toes and the fingers? How many of you look at a child and say, wow, the child is healthy, I'm happy, right? How many of you say, wow, look like an engineer. <laughs> so happy. Look like a movie star, I'm so happy. The worst thing you can say, whose kid is this, all right? All, all we wanted is this child to be happy. But what happens as time goes along? We kind of change our perspective. I'm not saying you shouldn't have expectations. I think you need to have expectations. But the bottom line is this. Your relationship with your child is not going to change. I remember holding my first child, and I look at him. This, is, this little lizard here don't even know that I'm the father. But it doesn't change anything. It's going to be the same. 20 years from now, 30 years from now. We've got to have the right mindset. Now, as you can see, this is the brain. And uh, I want to comfort you. If you happen to talk to a teenager, they don't make any sense. I tell you, it's normal. When you talk to a teenager, I tell you one thing, okay? Uh, they, 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 will talk, uh, they, they will talk things as, they, they make silly comments. And you say, why do you want to say that? Have you got that feeling before? If you don't have, let me prepare you. It's going to be normal. Because this part of the brain, called the prefrontal cortex, it's going to take a, at least uh, 20 over years to develop. Okay? This is where the executive part, this is where the cognitive part is going to develop and make sense with things, along with the life journey. If the life journey is very short and they're not very open to a lot of things, this part will develop slower. And so it's good to expose your kids to a lot of things. All right? Now, I'm saying positive things. Huh? <laughs> Don't, uh, you, you, it's good exposure. Make them make sense of the thing. Why you need to save. Why you need to save up. Why you need to work hard. Don't take it for granted that they, uh, they could understand. I ask a lot of students, why do you need to study? You know what's the reason? Don't study, no pocket money. Mother-in-law, father-in-law. What? Father-in-law, mother-in-law? No, that's the way they think. You know, my mom asked me to study, my dad asked me to study, that's why I'm here. They are not here, they are my case. Okay, they don't make any sense. But to you and I, you and me, very easy. Why we need to study? A future, a career, get, get a lot of motivation, knowledge, everything. 
But for them, it takes time. Okay? Because this one, it takes years to develop. Okay? Mid-20s. Right now, research recently, I just read an article. Mid-20s, when they go through life. So, when your kids make a lot of silly mistakes, especially as teenagers, tell yourself, their brains are not fully developed yet. Okay? So, don't worry. What are the teenagers thinking? Okay? First of all, egocentric. It's all about what? Me. Weekend plans, they will come ask you, Dad, what, we, what are we doing? They are not asking you, what are we doing? They are asking, what am I going to do? Okay? What am I a part of? Are my plans included? How many of you plan holidays this coming December? Yeah? What are your holidays like? Tell me what are your holidays like? Hong Kong, right? Japan, right? And some even go to Europe. I tell you, you ask the kids to go, what would they say? Very good trip, is it? I have two teens, uh, personal experience. They came back from Europe. And I look at one of them uh, and I ask him, well, how's your trip? He looks very angry. I say, why? He say, oh, that's a terrible trip. I say, why? Where, where have you been? Rome. The way he said that, uh, it was my dream, it was my dream destination, no, go to Europe. After he said it, uh, it just, the bubble just burst. I say, why? Why you look so dull? And he says, yeah, Europe, you know. I say, why? Every day, pasta, pasta, bread. Oh, you. <laughs> I say, okay, the food. All right, but the place is nice. What? As if like Singapore got those nice buildings, we have to go down there and look at broken buildings. <laughs> Children. There's another bunch. Okay, I came back from Korea. And I, uh, this, this, this girl said, you know, I've been to Korea, how are you? Uh, this, actually, this guy went to Korea, how are you? He said, ah, oh, terrible trip, another one terrible trip. Where have you been? Korea. The way he said it, it's almost like North Korea. I said, North or South? <laughs> of course, North. Then why are you so unhappy? Why are you so unhappy? Every day, ginseng, ginseng, I didn't want to vomit. <laughs> then I said, what do you want? Chalet, barbecue with my friends. If their parents happen to know, they will save a few thousand dollars. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to say is this. Plan in such a way you include them. If it's a holiday, have a time where they, they, they just can hang out on their own. It's good to go with another family with kids of the same age. So, you know what, kids, you go and have it. You know, right now, you ask me to go for a roller coaster, right? Unless I think about suicide. I can't. I normally go with families and the kids are out there. You want to go? Like, just go, go, go. Where will be? I'll be there in the cafe. If you need me to pay anything, I'll be there with the fathers talking. Right? Rock climbing. You, if you ask me to rock climbing, rock climb, I can't even rock climb to save my own life. Forget it, but this is what the kids want. They, they want, you know, from the east, look at the east, look at the west, wake up 5 in the morning, rush here, rush there. To you and me, that's fun. Looking at Great Wall of China, they look at it, what is this? They want thrill. It's about them. Include them in your plans. Okay? Imaginary audience. I'm being watched. Right now, you understand why they want to doll themselves up. I have this girl that I counsel. Um, she doll herself up. Uh, she wakes up 5 a.m. in the morning. She doll herself up for two hours. Okay? She says, you know, I'm the hate prefect. I need to doll myself up. Everyone's looking at me. The spotlight. I say, why? Uh, the mother told me that uh, she wants to remove some hair on the leg. And she was very anxious. And so as a counsellor, I went there, do the, 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 the mother a favour. She will not come to me, let me go there. So I went there, he said, come tell me what's wrong. I have a lot of hair. Where? On my leg. I said, you want to see mine? <laughs> she laughed and I said, no, you're just going through normal. You're just going through normal uh, puberty, you know. That's great. I mean, that's, you're going to enjoy life like that. It's going to be okay. But everyone's looking at me. That's great. Enjoy the moment. All right, they always think like that. And I tell you, they always like to be cool, you know, and sometimes they don't talk. Don't talk to them is cool, but I, I explain to them. Most of my students who come to me, they don't talk. I say, no, that's cold. That's not cool. Cool means, you know, you smile and you talk to people. Cold means, that's cold. You never understand. Have you heard about this? You never understand. You and I got a gap. Uh, not that, not, not the t-shirt gap, you know. 
It's not a T-shirt. You don't understand me. You're not cool. You're not into the things I'm into. Parents, it's, it, it's great to be in the books of your teens. Get to, get to understand a little bit of their literature. Okay, how many of you listen to their, to their songs? Let me, let, me, let me try. How many of you know this group called Lincoln Park? It's not a park next to Bishan. Okay? But getting to know their music, getting to know what they're they are into. All right. How about One Direction? What do you mean One Direction? I heard of One Way. <laughs> oh, you know One Direction? Okay, my, my, my girl's favorite group. All right, things like that. Get to understand them, you know, and don't criticize their music. Criticize their music is as if like they criticize Bee Gees in your time. In those days, if you criticize Air Supply, I'll kill you. And I ask my kids, don't criticize Air Supply. You don't criticize Lincoln Park. Okay, okay. We are even. You'll never understand. Try to understand them. Try to understand what they're going through. Okay? And the, the more they say, you don't understand. Okay, fair. I don't understand. Tell me more. Okay? Try to understand what they're going through. It will never happen to me. You heard about this? Don't have a girlfriend. If you have a girlfriend, I tell you. What would they tell you? Never happened to me. One, two years later, oh, you. Dad, I got something to tell you. I like this girl. You fall from your chair. The more it never happened, you say, you know what? It will never happen, but let me tell you the consequence if it happens. I think it's good to give them resources. I think a lot of parents today, they don't give enough resource to the child. So when things happen, uh, the, the, the child don't know what to decide. And I tell you one thing, even though they look cool, they're not running towards you for advice, but they need your advice. They want your advice. In fact, sometimes they look exactly like they're not listening, but in their hearts, they're cherishing it. Isn't that true? We, even with us, in our parents, our parents, nag, 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 right? When we're teenagers, when you grow up, no, ma, no wonder my mom say that. Isn't that true? No wonder my dad says that. Because as parents, we are building up the tools. The, 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 the kids are toolboxes. We put in the tools. Hopefully, one day, they'll pick up the tools and use it. What shuts down the communication bridge? First of all, knee-jerking. Now, as, as counsellors, I'm, um, I'm trained to, be, to, to have a listening ear, but I can train you within a few seconds if you want to. Do you want to? You want to? Practice this with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Come again, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Imagine I'm your son, your 14-year-old son, all right? And I'm coming to you. Mom and dad, I want to tell you something. I like someone. Hey, the heart don't go too high. <laughs> Calm down a little bit, okay? I like a girl in class. Oh, hey, 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 hey. That's why you need to take a course for counseling. You know, it's, if you have a knee-jerk reaction, I was talking to Mr. Ong, you know, you know, have a lot of things in, uh, in school, what are you going to do? He says, remain calm. I say, that's true. As a father, I always tell myself, remain calm, even though there's a storm coming. <laughs> it's brewing, right? Is that a, calm, it's going to be fine, I'm going to die through. Okay, I'm not going to die. It happened before. All right, and don't knee-jerk. When you start knee-jerking, what will happen is, you know, you short-circuit everything. Whatever you have built, your trust, your love, everything will be short-circuited. So, first thing, okay? You've got to really be calm. Second thing is mistrust. Now, a lot of kids, they will say this, okay, you don't trust me. Now, is it true that we don't trust them? I would, I would say Yes. <laughs> And sometimes I will, I will come across, you know what, mom, uh, uh, dad, I want to go, go out with my friends, I want to come back at 11. I say, no, you've got to come back at 10. You don't trust me, right? And this is a trump card, isn't it true? You don't trust me. And they look at you angry and it becomes your fault. It, they, they are very good with this, uh, making you feel like it's your fault. And then I look at them and I tell them, say, you know what, I trust you, but I don't trust the people beside you. I don't trust the situation you're in because I don't even know what kind of situation you're in. I know you're a smart boy. I know you don't do uh, what is wrong. But you know what? I don't trust the kind of situation and the kind of things that are thrown in you. You can't handle that. All right? So I do trust you. Mistrust is very important. Now, a lot of parents, you know, uh, I, I have counseled a lot of parents, they went through the kid's phone. How many of you have done that? 
very quietly. Your kids are here, you don't raise up your hands. Okay? And you know, they went through the kids' phone text messages, or you know, when you see something on a Facebook, first thing say, I saw your Facebook. Why do you write that? Or your Twitter. Right? Because I've done that myself. And my son said, that is not fair. I, I, I friend you. And because I friend you, you read all these things, you're attacking me because of that. So, unfriend me. <laughs> all right, we had this discussion before. And I tell you one thing, okay? They, they, they just, teens, they value the trust. I'm not going to tell mom, but it's a personal thing between you and me. Tell me. Okay? And make sure you don't go and gossip and tell your wife, say, hey, I tell you, or don't tell him. This is a good advertisement for your wife to tell. Right? So, mistrust is one thing. Selective listening. Some parents, we are trained to look straight, smile. Inside our mind, we have an agenda. Isn't that true? Mm, mm, mm. You can't wait for them to finish, and then after that, psh, you fire a missile at them. Selective listening. Try and listen. And sometimes, it's not about what they say. Sometimes, maybe it's their body language. Look at their body language. The body language is talking to you. A lot of parents tell me, you know, my, my, my son don't talk. Well, how are they reacting? He doesn't want, want, want to look at me. Exactly, that's a message. Dig into the message. And a lot of times, you know, parents say, you know, uh, he's not trying to communicate. He's trying to communicate. Everyone communicates. In this room, everyone communicates. How are we going to perceive that? Assumption. Worst thing is to assume. All right? You assume your, your, your child is asked a lot of questions. Okay, if you are... If you want to really get to know your child, ask a lot of questions. Don't assume that you know the answer. Okay, sometimes it's really, really... I have many times, okay, my, my, my daughter, my second daughter especially, my relationship with her is a little bit volatile. I've got to be honest. Okay, but it has got so, so much better in the past couple of years. But we have, our dif- we have our differences. And sometimes you come across like you don't hear enough. You know, I'm ashamed as a counsellor. My daughter said that to me. I can hear from an inmate. I can hear from a parent. I can feel anyone. When it comes to my daughter, I become emotional. Isn't that true? Well, some of us are very good colleagues. Colleagues give us an A, you know, for relationship. Coming back home, different. Your child gives you a C. Why? Listening, because there's a lot of assumption. Right. Lose your cool. Once you lose your cool, that's it. The wall turned to you. When you're angry, guess what? They use your anger against you. You see, you see, you're angry. Even though I'm wrong, but you're angry. <laughs> right? <laughs> you shouldn't be angry. Yeah, I'm wrong, but you're angry. <laughs> and it just backfires like a boomerang. And so, you know what? The more you keep your cool, the less they can use it on you. All right? So, keep cool. What can you do to keep cool? If you're not in the right frame of mind, tell them, say, go to your room. I'm going to my room. I'll talk to you later. Go and take a long shower. Sometimes at most, uh, you know, I won't want to come out until I'm cool. Or walk around the estate, do something. All right? Don't, you don't have to talk about the situation immediately. Just tell them, you just go and cool off. I need to cool off, okay? Maybe you're not in the right frame of mind to talk. Definitely, I'm not ready to talk. Don't talk and don't have to respond immediately. Okay? Try not to lose your cool. Now, religion changes. When uh, your child goes to secondary one, I tell you one thing, okay? When they're primary six, who's the oldest in school? P6s, right? Secondary one, who's the oldest in school? Oh, I tell you, Sunday. Uh, the girls will always say this, uh, I will never get married to all these dwarfs. Treat their d- d- classmates and the boys all as dwarfs because the, the boys haven't grown up yet, right? No, never. So ugly. When they go to secondary school, the first guy that came, you know, what come to, wow, the sack four, sack five, all the tall, dark, handsome. Hi, my name is Sam. Their heart will go beat faster than ever. <laughs> you need anything? Call me. First time, you know, oh, this tall, dark, handsome, not dwarf, you know, anymore. Then they start thinking, and then you know what? Their peer group start to change. Their friends start to change. They start to wear in a certain way. They start to talk, uh, like to talk in a certain way. Okay, it changes, and then there are BGR issues. Well, no one is BGR, boy-girl relationships. Starts to change. All these things start to change. Okay, so to comfort yourself, cognitively, they are not totally developed yet, tell yourself. Now, if, in the shower, if you're having a, 
you're having a cool off time. Uh, this is a very good phrase to use. Uh, your brains are not totally developed yet. Just tell yourself that. I told myself a lot of times, yeah, it's not totally developed yet. You will come, but not today. <laughs> Emotionally, they are unstable, okay, because of hormonal changes. In the morning, they'll be very happy, especially for girls. At night, they'll want to kill you. It's normal. Just don't pass them the knife. Okay, and it's, it's going to be like that emotionally. You know, they, they, they need, some, they, they need your, your support. Okay, and, and, and they need you to listen to them. Decisions are centered around self. We talk about that. So include them in a lot of things. Now, if they're involved in a uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, okay, we'll always use this to kind of help them to understand what is true love and infatuation. All right, uh, what is true love? True love is slow. Is it? True love is person-centered. True love brings confidence, welcome others, focus on, focus on others also. Infatuation is what? Instant. I like this person, why? Don't know. Right? Instinctive, right? And then, infatuation is actually focused. It triggers insecurity because you know what? Oh, why are you talking to other people? Why? 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 Why can't you talk to me more? Okay? Infatuation just want us. We. Who? You. And me. That's all. Okay, infatuation uh, emphasizes self. What do I get from you? So normally when I want to tell, um, tell kids about true love, I, I use this chart to help me to explain to them. Okay? Uh, of course, I won't show them this chart. I will ask them questions. Don't show them this chart that you look thick, thick for me right now. <laughs> they will deny it. Okay, so in your conversation, ask them questions like that. Okay? Why peer relationship? Why peer pressure? They want to be accepted uh, across the board. That's true. They want to find a role to fit in. And, uh, you know, growing up, I tell you, I have a problem fitting in. I'm not good in sports. Academically, I'm okay. And so when you play soccer, you know, I'm the last one. The reserve don't even want me. Do you know how, how is it like when you play soccer? You know, reserve, okay, you know, next game. So things like that. It's very difficult. It's very difficult if they couldn't, couldn't find a role um, in, in the school itself. So help them. Help them to really learn themselves, okay, and really accept themselves for who they are. They don't have to be different. Nowadays, the girls like to look at K-pop stars, right? They like, they like to look at Korean, Korean stars. They even talk about this uh, uh, shape called the S-shape. That's the perfect uh, body you need. Actually, you don't need that. Okay, help them to embrace themselves. Stressful times ahead. Okay, school changes. They change a new environment. Okay, um, maybe families have different expectations. Maybe they didn't get into the school they wanted. And maybe you're a bit disappointed. Let's be honest, as parents, we do have expectations. When your child don't get into the school you wanted, and you, we, I talk to a lot of parents, it's very funny, they always have, their, um, they always have this, this thought that, you know what, they can do better, they can always do better. This is not their best, they can always do better. Maybe the child has already done their best. And so right now, they're in new school. If you don't let go, you're gonna re- they are going to really feel it. It's going to come up somehow. So it's best that you talk to your child. You know, let your disappointment go. It's okay. Right now they're in the school. Help them to develop in that school. Okay? And lower down your expectations a little bit. Go with the flow. Friends, get to know their friends. Uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting for my, for my kids. I like to invite the teens to come to my house. The teenagers come to my house for dinner. And the boys like to eat. I tell you, you better stock up your fridge when they're here. They will rack sack the whole place and you feed them and you get to know them. All right, they're good boys. And some, sometimes, you know what, it's good to interact with them. Some of them, they need a father. Their fathers might not even be around. And, you know, being an uncle, they look at you like a fatherly figure. It helps them. You help, you help the society by being just that. Listen to your teens. Give suggestions. Walk with them. Stay positive. Okay, if I were you, uh, this is something I would, I would really, really encourage you to do. Okay? Now, how can you help... Um, as a parent, okay, how can you help yourself? Work with your spouse. If it's a marriage issue, then, you know, I will always encourage parents to work on your marriage issue. Don't let the children's issue become a marriage issue. Or don't let the marriage issue become a children's issue. S- separate the two the, the things. But if you are having uh, a, a marriage that is rocky, work on your marriage first. I always believe that. Okay, when you have a good base in your marriage, then there's, there, there's a more chance to really help your child. Communicate with the school. Uh, talk, to the, uh, talk to the school, talk to the, talk to the teachers, and be kind to the teachers. I, I, look at, um, I look at teachers sometimes when they look at a parent coming. 
they are a little bit apprehensive. You don't know what they're doing. You're coming, say, I want to tell, I want to talk about my child. Yeah, your child. What about your child? You know. I I choose to really be um, be kind, um, be polite. Uh, I, I I let them as professionals to do their job. Okay, I will let them tell me as a parent how can I support. Okay, that's the best I can do. I won't want to tell you. I tell you, you got to change this book, this curriculum. I think the way you teach my daughter is not right. We have, we have no place in the school like that. Okay, I think it'll be best to really support them. How can I help you? You know, uh, if my if my kids uh, um, teachers, I always communicate with them. All right, and they love to communicate also. Balance your lifestyle. All right, don't just work, 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 work. I believe uh, you need. I, I always believe this. I need my kids. Not my kids need me. I need my kids. Because they help me to understand my purpose in life. If not, why am, I, why am I doing what I'm doing right now? Right? They help me to understand what's my purpose in life. They help me to understand that there's a, there's a worthwhile, worthy purpose. Okay, especially when days are bad. Principles are caught, not taught. Role modeling is very important. Okay? Have you, have you ever wondered your kids, when they are nasty, they look familiar? The way they answer is, you know, it looks familiar, sounds familiar, like your wife? No. <laughs> Probably it's you. All right, they pick up things from you. You know, as a counselor, I, I, I deal with a lot of kids and they say, you know, my dad, my mom also did this and all. And, I, and I'm not saying that all parents are bad. I, I'm sure right now you're trying your best to really help yourself and at times to help the kids with the best solutions you have. But there will be times you make mistakes. And what can you do? Apologize. But don't always apologize, you know, I'm sorry, just now I scold you. Every day, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have a lot of sorry parents going around. <laughs> just, just to really hold on to the kid. No, there are times you need to do what you need to do. But there are times, I believe there are times you need to apologize sincerely. Okay? And make it sincere. Okay, I will skip this. Now, let me ask you, what do you see here? Singapore. Someone say Singapore. Okay, No. This is not a Japanese flag, right? What do you see here? How many of you see a dot here? A red dot? How many of you are only, you can only see the red dot? Human nature will only focus on this. But as a parent, you need to focus on the rest. You know what I mean? Like for example, one mistake. It's just a mistake, but there are other qualities. Isn't that true? Sometimes with one mistake, we look at one mistake, we forget about the qualities of the child. All right? Especially with teenagers. Their mistake is so big. Eh? If you focus on it, it gets bigger. And it covers the whole page. All right? As parents, try and look at the other qualities that your child has. Okay? Um, avoid the following. Create bitter feelings. Unresolved anger or even create doubts, all right? Make sure the kids feel accepted. When they have anger, talk to them about it. Dissolve the anger. Make sure that you resolve whatever you have between your child. Try and resolve it. You can't get a third party. Don't let them harbor and then it says, okay, now say sorry. You must say sorry. You, you, yes, you. And then they say sorry. Yeah, right now we are squared. No, it's not. Okay, they're still angry. And that creates a lot of bitterness. Now, a lot of people want to know why CPR I come to this, eh? okay, this is by uh, Dr. Jerry Solomon who did uh, movie therapy, uh, I credit it to, to him. He came to Singapore and taught us this and I thought it's very, very useful. First of all is consistency. Consistency with spending time, I talk about the power of one. What is the power of one? One hour, one week, one child. All right, can we repeat that? The power of one. One hour, one week, one child. If you can do this, I tell you, it'll be fantastic. If you have three children, what can you do? One hour, one week, one child. That means you will do it three times. Why? Why don't we do it together? Well, the three ch children have different needs. Especially teenagers, they need your time. But what I, if, if I right now ask them to spend time, they don't want to spend time with me, it's okay. Make it make it a habit. Right now, they are, they are not in tune with it, but subsequently, they will love it. But don't go with agenda. A lot of parents, you know, they go with agenda. I want to spend time with you. The child look at you and say, oh no, what's happening? I ask a lot of children, I ask a lot of teenagers, you know, tell me. If your parents right now ask you, okay, one of them asks you, I want to have dinner with you, one-on-one. -on -one. 
something is wrong. I must have done something wrong. You know, and, and I, I, I did a workshop with 15 kids. This is what they say. If your parents say, uh, I love you, what will happen? I'll fall from my chair. <laughs> and another one say, you know what? I think he got cancer. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> we must be really serious. And you know, I make it a norm. One-on-one -on -one time. It's very important. Start young. All right. I go on a date every week with my daughter. I, it, actually, because I got three kids, I actually trod it, okay? Once, uh, once in two weeks, I'll go on a date with my daughter. With my son, I, I don't stir tea with my son. My son won't stir tea and talk to you. Boys, forget it. Girls, you can stir coffee and he still talk to you. Boys, have you seen two guys Starbucks? How are you? <laughs> Boys, you do sports with them. You do games with them, you just walk, you know, you just go and play. I, 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 I run with my son, I do, I, I do stuff with my son. And after I sit down with him and then say, how are you? When you're perspiring, eh? you, don't, you don't sit face to face, you sit next to him and say, how are you? Yeah, terrible. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> Commission goes, all right? So the power of one. Spend time consistently. Predictable. Children want to know what you want. Do you have set rules? You need to have set rules. And you need to explain to them why they need to have set rules. So that they can predict. When they can predict, they understand what you want. There's a good chance they feel very secure. A lot of kids, they're not secure. They don't know what you want. When I was growing up, I told you, right, my mom only got one parenting called a cane parenting. I don't know what she wants. And sometimes when I ask, before I can even open my mouth, pssst, what did I say? Exactly. <laughs> Go figure, you know. Uh, very insecure. Grow up very insecure. I don't know what I want. I don't know what my parents want. So it's good to set boundaries. It's good to set something that, you know what, is achievable. They know, and you know. And then you set consequences. You tell them what consequence then, you, have. you know, if you break this, what will be the consequence? All right? They know who you are. Values. Moral values. You tell them early. Right, don't, don't until when they have a boyfriend, girlfriend. Hey, you cannot have boyfriend, girlfriend until 15. Right now, you need 14. <laughs> Too late, isn't it? So, tell them early. Okay, set the ground rules. Reliability, they can count on you. Your kids need to know, I can count on mom, I can count on dad. Build that friendship. Faithful friend. If you fail to be anything but be a faithful friend, I tell you, they'll come back to you. No matter how bad it will be, the situation, it will be stormy, but they'll come back to you. Okay? Now make sure, okay, if you, if you want to set the, 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 the place to talk, set the atmosphere. Don't talk to them in McDonald's. Sometimes you might want to talk to them in McDonald's, but don't talk to them any serious stuff in McDonald's. You end up quarreling. Because McDonald's is so noisy, you raise your tone, okay, and the next thing is tonality. It's very important. The way you say sorry. There are many ways people, when you say sorry, people can feel they're sincere. Isn't it true? Sorry. Say sorry, eh, what? Did you hear it? Sorry? Tonality, very important. It's not the words. Sometimes it's the way you come across, using the I message. You know, sometimes parents, if you fail to just neutralize, like you're very angry and you know they're unreasonable, you can always use I language. Like, for example, I messages. I'm feeling very down. Just now when you shouted, I'm feeling very down. I felt disrespected. I felt very small. I felt like crying. You can say that. Then they understand how you feel. A lot of times you know this is how we come across. Why you shout? Don't shout. Never shout, understand? Huh? And the funny thing is this, okay, if your kids are late, right? Coming back home late, right? What will you say? If they break the curfew? First thing you scold them, why are you late? Then after that, eat or you not. <laughs> Have you eaten? Noodles there. I'll cook for you. Come on, parents. Can't you say, you know what, I, I'm concerned, I'm worried. The only time we know is, ah, eat it up. <laughs> Scrape that, tell them, you know, I'm worried. I love you. I don't know how's the neighborhood like, but you know, I care about you, you're my son. I do that a lot. And then my, 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 my kids will say, Dad, we won't do that. You know, Dad, don't worry, I'm a big boy. No, 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 I'm a father. Okay, this is the part that will never change. Okay? So...
That's important. And less is more. You know why less is more? The less you talk, uh, it's actually more. I, I think the MOE system right now teach, teach less, learn more, right? I use that, you know. Sometimes it doesn't mean you repeat 20 times, means you go in, no? No! Less is more. You, you know, you, you say it, you mean it, forget it. You know, sometimes we punish the child from morning to evening. You know, when they did something wrong, then in the afternoon, remember or not, this afternoon. In the night, remember or not. Next day, remember, it's late. <laughs> you keep on punishing the child and you're not letting go. Less is more. Okay? So this is how you can talk to them. Thank you so much. I hope the tips are useful.